That leads us to uh, to our our main topic today. Um, five times that tech ruined cars. Okay. And and I have these as uh, as general technologies uh, that haven't necessarily made cars more dangerous, but have definitely made them suck more. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Off the Record. We love them. You love them. They're the best. They help you fight tickets. Off the Record will set you up with a qualified attorney wherever you got a ticket in the U.S. and help you get those points off your record, right? You don't plead guilty. Pleading guilty is for suckers. You know why? Because it's a whole system that's designed to screw you. It's the cops, it's the courts, it's the insurance companies. They are picking your pocket, folks, all because you were trying to get somewhere on time. You know what I'm saying? Offtherecord.com slash TST or download the Off The Record app for your Android or Apple device and use code TST pod tst pod 10 percent off all legal services booked through off the record did you get a small ticket did you get a big ticket did you get a misdemeanor ticket off the record can help go to off the record.com slash tst or use code tst pod on the off the record app for 10 percent of all legal services booked through off the record get that app now have it ready in your phone that way if you get pulled over you won't be panicking you will know who to call all right, folks, on this one, Ed Zitron is in studio, uh, author of the amazing tech newsletter, Where's Your Ed At?, something I read every single week, and host of the new podcast on iHeartRadio, Better Offline. Ed is a critic of the tech industry. He knows all the ins and outs of, uh, of what's going on in Silicon Valley, and um how they're screwing us. I'm going to be honest. It's how, how this system is screwing us. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's bad. It's all, it's all very bad. And Ed is here to detail exactly why it's very bad. And of course, our main topic of the day, five technologies that ruined cars. It's a fun one with Ed Zitron on the Smoking Tire Podcast. But Don't fucking disturb me. Don't talk to me, man. I'm podcasting. So, um. <laughs> so I tell my mom a lot. <laughs> mom, shut <laughs> So, leave me alone, mom. For like uh, SEO gold. I didn't actually tell Ed about this one, Zach. Okay. Because uh, I didn't, I didn't want to give him last minute homework. Uh, for SEO reasons, the way we format the show now is we do like 30 minutes on like what's going on with Ed, and I've got some stuff out of your newsletters we That's can talk fine. about. Then it's 30 minutes. We have a main topic, which is like real SEO friendly. So it's uh, today, it's uh, the top five times that tech ruined cars, which I thought would be, uh, okay, would be yeah, fun. Okay, yeah, yeah, And if you can think of some on the fly or critique uh, some of ours. I don't um, know. I'm curious to see what you brought up because someone died because of Tesla design recently. Uh, did they get hit by a cyber truck and no, flayed? They, no, they're okay. caught because of the way that you change gears. In oh, Tesla I saw, oh now. yeah, the fucking what's her name? Is she uh, Angela Chow. Chow? Yeah, 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 so yeah. grim as well. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, she. It was it. Elaine Chow's sister. I don't know. Oh who that my is. god, oh. really? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Elaine Chow was this that awful Secretary of Transportation under Trump, who's married to Mitch McConnell. Oh, cars are fighting back. And and her sister. <laughs> Can't say that on the <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, we can we can we can talk about that. Okay. That's, right. a, that's also. Yeah, have right. you read this story about uh, auto manufacturers and uh, insurance companies? Uh, the data being sent from GM vehicles to insurance companies that's spiking people's car insurance rates. Oh, uh, yeah. Tracking. Yeah. That's. I'm not surprised. I'm not we surprised were, either yeah. because Progressive, like over ten years ago, the did snapshot. They, yeah, they did the OMD thing. Yeah, that's the. So snapshot. you had to volunteer for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The thing. They did it under a um, under the guise of if you drive well, we will lower your rates. But the fine print was, if you don't. If you don't, we <laughs> well, will Well, now do. isn't Tesla insurance doing the thing if yeah, you drive Tesla, too much Tesla's at night? Yeah, Tesla's far more up front with it. They're like, you get a driving score. Yeah, yeah. It's so weird, though. It's so yeah. bad. If you drive at night too much, they'll, they'll like raise your rate. Yeah. Well, if, yeah, if you're, if you're in a but risk also, or high risk category. But also, these are naturally racist algorithms as well. Of course. It's, you know, urban market. If you drive in the wrong area, yeah. if you drive at the wrong time Who lives day, in the wrong area? Right, <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah, that, that can be included cool. in Sweet. that main yeah, that's a good one. topic. We yeah. are We go. Going. We exist. I'm a, we sound we, good. We are, we are valid. We are valid. Yes. We live. Oh, you're right. And you uh, you exited uh, Substack, right? Because of yes, Nazis? Yes, Nazis. Yes, it turns out Nazis are bad. <laughs> What's great is the people who are like, yeah, well, there's only a few Nazis. I'm like... 
I'd like to ideally keep the Nazi level at zero. How many? Yeah, where is the line? No, I, yeah. if, I'm like, how is two? Like, is is that just a few of them? If you feel like it, like, like, is that how much is two? I love the story about. Uh, it's like some punk bar in Britain. Yeah, Everyone knows uh, yeah, that story. it was the crust punk one. But I'm actually questioning whether that story has happened. But I think it's still a good choice. Like I'm sure it's happened in different permutations. But I don't know if that yeah. guy's one actually happened to him. Yeah, because well, they, heard... they kick out the friendly Nazi. Yeah, because because they don't want it to be known as a place that allows any Nazis. Yes, which, which is, is ideal. Like, yes, yeah. it's a good um, allegory. Yes, and right. It, also, it makes sense. It's just if you allow one, <laughs> yeah. they will now hang out there. That's yeah. where the Nazis will go. Yeah, I just finished uh, the gentleman. Uh, Guy Ritchie. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, Guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie. Thoughts on Guy no, Ritchie? Guy Ritchie. Just I think is British people consider him slightly differently to Americans. Uh huh. Like as the what well, he's married to Madonna for a while, but yeah. also just like he does this oh, Guy Ritchie thing, and it's kind of hard to stomach that kind of thing when you're otherworldly rich and married to Madonna at some point. And also right. the Aladdin movie he did was one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. Okay, fair. I and also, seen like, it. Is that the rare. live action one? Yeah. No, okay, yeah. It is genuinely bad in ways that I actually kind of admire. Oh, yeah. Almost so, in, in just the levels of... Impressively shit? It's almost like they watched the original and they were like, oh, how do we make this worse? And they really thought about it. They yeah. took the magic and just extracted like it with a machine. cerebrally. Yeah. Like, okay. like, like it, if I was told that that was the goal, I'd be like, this is actually one of the more subversive pieces of media ever Oh, yeah, made. okay. Like, if this was but a this dark is not joke. What, yeah, but yeah, Guy yeah, Ritchie yeah, is yeah. not that guy. No, I don't know him. Uh, I mean, and I'd have never, I don't think I've ever seen an interview with him. But I happen to like Lock, Stock, and, the, and great Snatch. Movie. Great movies. And I like The Gentleman, the movie. The one with Brad Pitt. I think that's that one's fun. I like Brad Pitt. Uh, Brad Pitt's great. It's great in Bullet Train. Yeah. Classic movie. <laughs> I liked Bullet, Bullet Train. Bullet Train's a classic. Bullet Train was a great I airplane love... movie. If Bullet you're going Tra Transcon, that's what you watch. I had one night where I'd had a, just a horrifying week, and I was just like run down. I was meant to go to a concert, and I just went, ah, fuck it, I'm going to watch Bullet Train. And it was the best decision it's I ever It's like a palate cleanser. It's so good, and it's yes. so dumb, and it doesn't try and be smart in any way. It's so, the foreshadowing is so heavy. Mm. It's like, oh, I'm going to put my gun in this locker. I hope nothing happens requiring <laughs> my firearm in the future. Yeah. I hope I don't regret this decision. Uh, uh, but the, the 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 Gentleman, the series, which is now on Netflix. Oh, it's a series. It's, it's a series. Oh, okay. They, it's... it's it's the same like basic premise as the movie The Gentleman, which I've also never seen. It's uh, a, a criminal element in the UK is paying off like broke dukes and shit. Because you know how like the the uh, the lords and the dukes they have these big estates, but they don't actually work. Yes. So they have no money. Yes. And so they rent out land on their estates for these weed growers. That's oh, okay. the basic premise of it. Oh, yeah. I remember this. Yeah. And so they made a series out of that okay. without Brad Pitt. But it is very good. I'm curious. And yeah. wait, why did we end up on that? No idea. I don't now remember. God damn it. Oh, fuck. Well, either way. Podcasting. It, <laughs> podcasting. Actually, yeah, I recommend it. That was good. Um, so... Thanks for coming back. My pleasure. I love your fucking newsletter. Thank oh, you. because there was Nazis. That's how. Yeah, there we go. That's we how. From Nazis to British weed. They, they discover a lord is a Nazi who collects Adolf Hitler shit. This is the weirdest version of Kevin Bacon I've ever played. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Seven degrees. Yeah. Of. Was it easy to leave Substack? Yeah, uh, no. Oh, really? <laughs> it actually really wasn't. I wanted to say yes, but also my thing was more difficult and ironically, the reason it was difficult was a podcast I've now stopped doing. Oh, shit. Because I had a podcast connect to Substack, and it was super easy to run a newsletter and a podcast. I mean, yeah. You just click a few buttons. I had to pay someone to make this new one and to transfer everything over. A guy called Ryan Single. Good bloke. But it cost money, and ghost <laughs> the newsletter went from being free to costing me, like, a few grand a year, which is fine. I love doing it, but it's also, the like, The price yeah. you pay to not have Nazis. And, yeah, and, well... I'm, I'm Jewish and I don't want to support that. And what's funny was they did actually try and talk to me a bit. And some of it they said was off the record, but trust me, nothing interesting happened there. Mm -hmm. It was all just like, yeah, well, you should stay. I'm like, well, are you going to do anything about my problem? They're like, no. I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, they don't make any money off of yeah. this, so why would I... Why would I stay? Yeah. Most... I follow probably, I don't know, six or seven newsletters, mm -hmm. and I would say... Five of them left Substack. As they should. But yeah. it's not easy. That's the thing I'll say. A lot of people were like, oh, you need to leave now. And for some people, it just isn't that easy. The people that just do pure text blogs, though, yeah, just you, you take you two seconds. There's no reason to leave. It's okay. to stay even. So it's when there's other media involved. It's, it's when you difficult. have a lot of followers on there and when you have a lot of posts. Like I have over 300 
that I've done. Uh -huh. That was not an easy lift. It, if you have over a certain threshold, uh -huh. you can't just click a few buttons and oh, upload okay. a few things. And in fact, moving over the list was surprisingly difficult. Mm -hmm. Something like 24,000 people. Back then it was like 19, 20,000? Yeah. I forget. It's, but it's, it's done now. Is it Command-C, Command-V 24,000 times? No, no, okay. it isn't. It's just you export the list and you need to change the bit, the parameters, uh, so that it just uploads okay. cleanly and moves All on. Right, so it, it's one of those things where if you don't have a big, if you're a few thousand people, it's pretty turnkey, but it costs money. Ghost yeah, isn't yeah. free. Yeah. So you need to, if you have, I think anything over a thousand, you have to pay them a month, which isn't sustainable okay. for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, Substack sucks though, and they there's no reason. It's crazy that they were like, oh yeah, we just, we, we're we free speech people. We can't have people that incite violence, but Nazis are fine despite what the Nazis stand for, and in fact did. Yeah, free speech people, like, I, I know that some of them, some of them are acting in good faith, but it I, to me represents like a pretty deep understanding of how like content platforms need to effectively run. But also, you're not a free speech platform. You already forbid violence. You forbid sexual stuff on there. They don't let sex workers use it. They're very clear that they don't allow some stuff. So why don't why do they allow? Why is this good? Yeah, yeah. Oh well, if we start having to ban these guys, we'll have to ban um, Islamic fundamentalists who are threatening people. I'm like, do you not ban them already? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 wait, like what? And they're like, ah. Uh. Like, well, if we ban these guys, we gotta start banging. Oh, well, yeah. cool. what's what's next? Oh yeah. God, I have to kick ISIS off of something. I'm yeah, not yeah, saying yeah. that Substack has ISIS on there. I have no idea. Yeah, not my not. problem anymore. Yeah, but Ghost is also basically open source and just disconnected from everything. It's great. I I like it. It works now. Good. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm imagine... also more people are reading it. I just think that there is a it's not, maybe it's just the timing, but mm -hmm. more people feel like they're reading it. I'm getting more engagement. More people are receiving the email. Oh, huh. which maybe, is so. It's maybe it has the main the, thing as well. Maybe the spam filters haven't started yeah, catching and stuff. I also think there's a. I had to double check. Yeah, I double check to make sure that you well, and first, others were not going into the spam. First two weeks you're on it though, it kicks you. It, like the email filters still got, like I freaked out real yeah, bad, yeah. and then yeah, you wrote a thing that no, was like I, check your spam filter. No, I was freaking the <laughs> hell out, and then Molly White, uh, what's she? Citations needed newsletter. Yes. She's fantastic. Yeah, Molly White. She I follow her. She's she, great. Genius woman. She actually could have been on Better Offline. In fact, um, she on your podcast on yes, IR Radio. Indeed, that's right. Um, she reached out and like, hey, I felt exactly how you're feeling now. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Calm down, like, settle down, Beavis. And she's, she was completely right. Cool. Yeah. And now it just goes to, um, I've never, never seen engagement rates like this. Good. Yeah, it's great stuff. Uh, Better Offline. Yeah. New podcast oh, yeah. on iHeartRadio. Yeah. And uh, I, I like the title. It's a good title. Yeah. And uh, it, it resonates with me because I quit Twitter. Uh, deactivated my account in December. Haven't been back on since. Also, Threads. D I don't oh, use God. the Threads. Um, yeah. Threads is the same as Twitter, just with less Elon. I mean, Thre pretty much. Threads is just, it's like LinkedIn after dark. <laughs> yes. And it's about as exciting as that. It's, oh, great, a network of Instagram comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but but je both were doing the same thing to my yeah. brain. Oh, yeah. Which is just creating this um, cycle of rage. Yes. Uh, which I would feed into. I'm not, of I'm course. not, I'm not, like not t accepting my own <laughs> role in that rage, but like nevertheless, not using it is like so much better for my mental health. Yes. And I, even removing Instagram from my phone. I think I'm just so aggressive with Twitter with muting, and I have been for years and years and years, uh -huh. that just, I don't get that much, which pisses me off. I also only use the following feed. Uh -huh. I don't touch the algorithm feed. I'm yeah, not interested. Yeah. And so the stuff that gets raised is pretty cool. I like it. Like I, I'm like I'm very positive on what I get on Twitter because for the most part the freaks don't find me unless they're my freaks, my kind of freaks. Yeah. So I'm very happy with that. Blue Sky's great. She yeah. Tried, Blue Sky's. Great. I made the account to hold the username. Maybe one day we'll it's see. It's rocking. I love yeah? it. All right. Maybe one day. I love Blue Sky. Guys, got to take a quick break from the action for Auto Tempest, who is supporting our show today. When you're looking for a car, you want to cast that wide net and check as many places as possible. Nobody does that like Auto Tempest. It brings together listings from all the top sites online like Cars.com, True Car, eBay Motors, Carvana, and many, many more, so you can get them all in one place rather than having to open up a dozen tabs and searching a bunch of sites separately. Seriously, when we are shopping for cars uh, to do our project car giveaways, Auto Tempest is the only place we would look. I, For me, 
I'm busy, my time is valuable, time is money, and I don't want to input the same search terms into a whole dozen different places. It's so easy to go to Auto Tempest and just bring all that into one place. It even lets you compare with results from Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist nationwide, not just in your local area. Auto Tempest even has an app right, for iOS and Android, so you can use the website or have Auto Tempest right on your mobile device on your home screen. Auto Tempest has all the cars with one search. Head over to autotempest.com slash tire now so they know we sent you. Same great service, autotempest.com slash tire, and start searching for your next car. Now back to the show. Um, so what's the what's the podcast about? So it's kind of like the newsletter, but turned into a podcast, but not identical mm-hmm. to that. It's something I've realized. So it was Cool Zone Media, who's part of iHeartRadio, reached out to me late last year, and they were saying, we've read your stuff, we've, we've wanted to do a weekly tech show, and the whole goal of it was to kind of go into issues exactly the same way I've gone in the newsletter, which is personal, opinionated, coming from, I run a PR firm, I write, the combined opinions there, but also... A lot of tech coverage has moved in two directions. It's either enthusiastic puff pieces or it's just complete cynicism. I'm not saying we're right in the middle. We're more toward the cynical, but it's I'm willing to be happy. I'm willing. Your to- newsletter is pretty cynical. It is. And I that- don't think, and I don't think it's un- unjustifiably <laughs> cynical. I mean, I think that it's well researched and you raise a lot of amazing points, um, and you clearly like wish tech worked for us and that's exactly it no that really is i wish it were better there are things in tech i use all the time there are basic things like wireless headphones that are pretty marvelous yeah i can yell at a speaker and it turns lights on that's cool i like that there are times with the vision pro which i've used and i've really loved it i liked your vision pro review and that's the thing that thing was just so frustrating but a perfect example of what i'm doing which is I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because that thing came out two years early. It was rushed. It's three and a half, four thousand dollars. It's too much. But when you use it, it's like watching the cinema yeah. in your home. It's kind of cool. But then it gives it you a headache. Seems to have a few very niche fo- uh, features that are exceptional, and everything sure. else is just sort of. Eh. But at the same time, watching movies and TV on it is really cool. Like it's really, really cool. It's un- unbelievably cool. Everyone I know who I've let use it said it's really cool and then they get a headache like i have i tried to watch dune dune on the flight i watched half of it and it was so good and it was so cool giant screen but on my head it felt like someone was doing this to my from skull. from the physical weight of it or from the screen being it's close because, to your eyes it isn't obvious but i think it is the screens and the fact it was quite dark yeah and it, i was on a sleeper thing because it was like an 11 and a half hour flight yeah and I had points and it was just, I think it's because it was dark and the screens were very bright, but it was just, I was sitting there annoyed because I was loving this film. I was really into it. And the actual screen was really quite immersive. It was beautiful. But also, I don't want to be in pain to enjoy something. Right. I don't want to suffer. I've I've done um, some very good racing simulators. Full motion, mm-hmm. amazing sound, seat belts that cinch. I mean, really. Damn, that's cool. Yeah, they're fucking legit. I mean, they're that's 70, so cool. 80, 100,000 dollars. They're 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 as much as real cars. That fucking rocks. They're awesome, and you should try one. I would um, love to. CXC Simulations here in El Segundo. Oh. They make the coolest racing sims. Ooh, I'd love to try that. But they have two different kinds. The the same rig, but then they have they have ones with monitors. Yeah. yeah. Proper, you know, either it's a curved screen or multiple screens or whatever. They have one that's a, a spherical dome screen. That one's like a million bucks. Let the Star, let the star yeah. Wars arcade. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they have same rig, goggles. I can't do the goggles for more than like 10 minutes. Yeah. But I could do an hour and a half with a screen. But I th- And that's the thing, like at home in a well-lit room, it's great. But at the same time, if I'm at home, I like to watch the television. Right. And if my fiance's there, for example, yeah, I don't want to just watching. be sitting there with a like a dickhead, like, eh, shut up. Mm. Do you think that uh, America is, or the world is ready to wear weird shit on their face in mass? I think this is the biggest problem between Google Glass, Oculus, stuff like this, is for the most part, we don't like wearing weird shit on our face. I think they just made a mistake with how they marketed it and went about it. They shouldn't have... They shouldn't have marketed it like this was something that you walk around with. That was a big mistake. They should have got in directors and said, this is the ultimate media device uh-huh. and also priced it cheaper. Like they, There are some remarkable things like moving around the windows is insane. It's so cool. And then you get a headache or like some weird bug happens and you close something or you try and use the on-screen keyboard and it sucks. Yeah. But then you use it and you're like, this actually, ma-. like in a, especially for traveling, it's really good for writing. It's immersive. You can 
Just have your windows around you. Get your little wireless cable. My first cable. thought was airplanes. Oh, cool. This is, this is the th and ultimate airplane And it's tool. terrible on planes That's because of the crazy. travel mode. It's so There are so many moments with it as well. Like you have on, to change that mode, otherwise it gets confused by the G-forces, right? Yes. Yeah. And also... <clears throat> If you set, if it does the travel mode wrong, your windows are all like this. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny unless you want to do stuff, then it's not so funny. But that's the thing. If they were just like, this is basically a big sexy monitor, I think they'd have done better. But I also think they wanted to show the markets more. They wanted the, the growth engine to be there and say, this is the future. It isn't the future. It mm -hmm. could be if it was a tenth of the size. I think if this was... I'm, I don't think they should be so on this idea of walking around with it. Yeah. I think that's just an insane idea. The pass-through is cool. It's cool being able to see my cat walk up to me. I can write on this thing. I can actually I get my wireless keyboard. I can focus. You can connect the wireless keyboard to it, right? Yes, like, yes. No problem, yeah. So. And I have severe ADHD. I'm medicated for it, but still, like focus is a problem. And this thing, you can turn off the world around you and really focus. I wrote the review of this thing on it. It was great. But then annoying crap happens all the time, and you're like, fucking hell, Apple. Fucking hell, why didn't you wait a year? Yeah. Why didn't you get this right? And it's very much just, I don't think they give a shit. I think they knew people would buy it. I've, I bought it because I was doing the show. That was my yeah, justification. Yeah, I mean, you, but you're, you're, if it's just people like you buying it whose intent is to review it, that's not great, you know. I've um, been weirdly quiet about it, though. You really, when the Apple Watch came out, every dickhead had it on. Every dickhead was in Vogue magazine. They were doing fashion things. There was LA Times pieces being well, People like, don't like wearing weird shit on their face. Yeah. I mean, it looks dumb. If you put that on your face, it looks dumb oh, as Oh, yeah, fuck. You, you are the most muggable man. <laughs> yeah. But also, it's just like, I don't know, make it a film and entertainment thing. As an entertainment device, it's incredible. That yeah. was what I thought when Google Glass came out. I My first thought was, this is a tool for professionals. Yes. Augmented reality in general. Yeah, it's like a heads-up display. A tool mm -hmm. for, for doctors or for engineers or for, for someone that needs that data there, you it know. It kind of reminds me of the heads-up displays you get in cars. Yeah. I actually really like those. Yeah, yeah. When they're done well and they're not a distraction, they're just showing you the basics you need. They're yeah, great. Yeah. It keeps yeah. your eyes on the road. Yes. And I think the Google Glass and stuff like that could work. I but just, I think that's a great reason why it didn't work is that Google Glass was saying that they're going to provide – way more information than the heads-up display in a car yeah. and they they looked at it as a positive like you can walk by five buildings and look at them and then we'll tell you what's in it and we'll tell you the prices of the chips and the cvs and da, da, da. it's like i don't think people need as much information as they thought we would want and we're already quite overwhelmed with the world around us yeah. before we have our phones and then we open our phones and there's all sorts of other shit yeah that's getting in our faces everything is very overwhelming do we really want I like the Vision Pro for escapism as a thing to escape and to shut off the world. It's actually kind of cool. Yeah. But at the same time, it's too expensive. It's so expensive. It's I, so I saw a Twitter poll that said the retention use on that is not good. Like people week one, two weeks after they buy it are just not wearing it. Stop using it. I haven't used mine in weeks. That's yeah. not great. I used mine on the plane, got a headache. I'm like, fuck this shit. That's not great. I wanted to watch Dune so bad. I was really getting into that film, but my head hurt. Wait, so you you touched on it for a second. You said if you're in a room that's brightly lit, yes, it's okay. If you're yes. on a dark aircraft, not good. Yes, the so, number one place for using so it. So why why is that? So I think it's the if you have a bright TV in a dark room, it will hurt your eyes. Uh huh. I think it's just that. Okay. It's just the bright light in a dark room. It's just very overwhelming. Your eye has to open yeah, and contract yeah. a lot. Cool. You yeah. know the scientific reason I did. I'm not, not trying know. to cut you off. But <laughs> oh like, no, yeah. no, no, no! I'm glad you did. An optometrist, and they're like, "That's what it is. It's your, your eyes trying to open close really a lot, and if it's too dark around you, like it's just it's difficult for your eye to about to look at both. This that I mean, makes this sense. Is, this is what I happened when I was driving back from Vegas two weeks ago or three weeks ago in the G wagon, which has a big fucking screen. Oh, right. God. Press car, not mine. Okay, but it has a <laughs> huge screen, and and I was driving in the dark, and and it was foggy. And the screen was so bright that it was really fucking up my ability to see out the windshield. And that was the thing. My eyes yeah, were yeah. burning as well. Yeah. But I've used it for hours at home, and it's fine. How and interesting. It, and it, it sucks because, again, I just keep thinking this. And I thought the same thing when I was trying to edit a Google Doc on it, and I could not convince it to – because you do it with your eyes. You select – I kept trying to select, and you have to do this. I kept trying to select the top of the Google Doc, and it wouldn't do it. Mm. And I was just thinking, same thing with the the travel. So like, did no one fucking think of this? Did no one say, "Hi, oh, I wonder if anyone's going to use Google Docs, the thing <laughs> used by billions of people? Will anyone use this in the dark?" Hmm. 
nah, fuck them. Yeah. Like, and there's just, there is a lot to it where it's just very clearly they were like, eh, fuck them. That's a bummer because it really seems like the airplane is the play. That seems exactly. like it. It's, Seems like the ultimate travel tool if you're on planes. I will say this. I'm going to use it when I go and travel and I have to write so like write an email, write a newsletter, and I'm traveling. It will be pref- preferable hmm. to using my laptop. Absolutely. Do you set it so you're like on a mountaintop or something, or do you use the pass-through? You just, I use the pass-through if anyone's in the room. If I'm like in a locked hotel room, I'm going to turn the thing on if I need to. And I've done that. And I've done. Is that pleasant? Yeah, it's great. It's really cool. Like, there are moments where you're like, ah. This is so cool. And then, and this is the thing that I think a lot of reviewers got wrong is you constantly have to, and I'm sure you do this with the expensive vehicles as well, you just have to keep hitting yourself in the head and say, this is too expensive. Uh This cost $4,000, which is top of the line MacBook Air, top of the line iPhone, and then dinner at an expensive restaurant. Dude, I I mean, I spent three grand on a computer, on an Apple computer, right? But I'm using it. Five hours a day mm-hmm. for four years to same, make it worthwhile. Same here. I would never get that kind of use out of something like this. I would love to. I yeah. would love this to be that, but yeah. it isn't. And yeah. it, and I think kind of this is the frustration. It could have been. It could have been with a little more time in the oven, mm-hmm. a little bit more attention to detail. If Apple can have done this, they could do more. And if they can't, they've lost their fastball. And maybe they have. Maybe they... But it, I actually like the fact that they did something new. It feels like it's been forever since we had a new thing, sure. a new gadget that actually looked different. I'm not yeah. saying it's good, or I'm saying it's too expensive and no one should buy it. But at the same time, cool, something new, something yeah. new. It feels like a long time since we had something cool and new. Not chat, GPT. Who gives a shit about Do you think we're it? reaching the limit of what the human brain is interested in in terms of physical gadgets? Like, they want to give us more information with Google Glass or these things, and we just go, we don't want that. We don't need it. We don't connect to it. I think that it's interesting because I don't think it's a lack of human interest. I think it's a lack of investment in actual R&D. I think a lot of tech firms have moved away from creating new things and have just looked for new ways to drill into old things and get more money. Because I think that... There was a time, and maybe we're just approaching the top of the S curve. Maybe this, we are just reaching peak technology, and this is what we're going to have for a long time. But then something like the Vision Pro comes out, and you're like, is it? Or maybe do you guys just not care? Yeah. Like you've got multiple trillion dollar or three trillion dollar tech firms, and what have they made? What's Microsoft done for the world in a long time other than make money off of cloud computing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not and, much. I mean, once we got to, for me, the iPhone, yeah, you know, that's that's the uh, limit of my ability. I have the entire world's fucking information in my pocket. Like, I don't really need more than that. Like, and the thing and it is, integrates with my car. Cool, done. And the funny thing is with Apple is they should actually get. I, I'm not an Apple fanboy, but I use a lot of their stuff, and I like their stuff because it does the thing I need it to. But when they brought in silicon, Apple silicon M1, M2, M3, it was one of the biggest jumps in consumer computing ever and it was just because it was faster and what they just made a new chip mm-hmm. it's like it didn't allow us to do more it just allowed us to do more in a cheaper thing yeah and it's good but at the same time where's the new stuff it doesn't feel fun anymore the tech industry stopped being fun why do i have to care about sam altman why is sam altman <laughs> making 400 million dollars off of reddit yeah it's just that these fucking assholes are winning but they're not doing anything fun yeah ha- take some risks do something new give me new gadgets give me new toys at least do something instead of just making more and more money off of doing objectively worse things you uh you used a really funny term uh and i think you may have quoted it from somebody else habsburg ai yes jason sadowski yeah which is a term that i liked which is because i i think fucking chat gpt is stupid it is and and i think that it just as you say over and over in your newsletters it's that it's it's not only trained on garbage, it's now trained on its own output, which right. is garbage. So it's the term is basically the cycle of chat GPT being cha- tra- and tech like it being now trained on the output of other AI, creating this mutant cycle of AI generated trash. And that's the thing. These models are extremely demanding of training data. They need more and more of it. So they've turned to the open Internet. Problem is that the open internet has been turned into kind of a cesspool, not just by AI, you're correct on that one, but also because everything's search engine optimized, as you well know. So you've got thousands of websites that are built specifically to make Google search like them. And so that's what they're, so we're basically training these AI to spit out 
the most generic, generic stuff, which it will then eat and train itself to make more genericisms. And at some point, it's just going to make nonsense, but yeah. also the web is going to be engineered. But it's going to be very highly optimized nonsense. It's going to be all we can find. But that's the thing. Which it's... is fucking awful, by the way. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. And there was an Adweek story that went out yesterday which says, so Google has this thing come up called Google Generative Search, which is their generative AI product. It's literally them putting a generative AI on top of Google Search, which they fucked up. Because they made the internet terrible and the internet kind of turned like a plant towards Google and Google search. So they're doing a generative AI, which will then, instead of just, because Google search is just providing you the web's information. Yeah. They are saying, this is a thing. In a highly controlled manner where lots of people are take, taking advantage of it and exploiting yeah, yeah. it. Instead of that, they're saying, no, 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 Google will have some of the answers now. Google will be, be generating the answers from its training data and also the internet. Now, that's really bad. And the Adweek story said between 20 and 60% of search traffic could go away from media outlets. Oh, great. So, hey, remember that time when they fucked over the media in the mid-2010s? They're going to yeah. do it again. Well, that was yeah. Facebook, to be fair. Yeah. And now they're claim Google's claiming they're going to make changes to search. So you see less um, stuff built for SEO. So now Don't it's like it. rather than finding the thing you want using Google and then going to the thing, Google will just output the answer that mm -hmm. you believe you're looking for, even if it's garbage. Yes. And you won't go to the thing anymore. And also generative AIs hallucinate and come up with the wrong stuff. So yeah. this is bad for everyone. Everyone yeah, yeah. loses. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's great stuff. However, Except Sundar Pichai. Yes, yeah, Sundar Pichai will make another. He made $220 million, I believe, in 2023. Yeah. Great. Earned it, though, but he earned it. Earned it by laying off <laughs> tens of thousands of people and destroying Google's core products. It's so cool. This is why I'm cynical. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, got to just take one quick break from the show for Give Me the VIN. Give Me the VIN wants to buy your car, whether it's your daily driver, your pickup, or your Lamborghini. If you want that car gone, Give Me the VIN wants it. Say goodbye to dealing with dealerships and get a true buy offer for your car now at Give Me the VIN. Give Me the VIN puts your car right on the money, providing you with a hassle-free online option to sell your car for more. It's as simple as as going to GiveMeTheVIN.com slash Smoking Tire and entering your car's VIN number or license plate number. You'll get an instant, real offer on your car in minutes that is always well above any dealer quote. Give Me The VIN is guaranteed to beat CarMax or they'll send you a check for 100 bucks. You can go to one of Give Me The VIN's office locations or they'll come to you. It's easy and it's fast. Go to GiveMeTheVIN.com slash smoking tire to get a real offer on your car today give me the vin.com slash smoking tire it's easy they give you a great price and they save you time and therefore headaches and money guaranteed to beat carmax or they'll send you a check for 100 bucks give me the vin.com slash smoking tire do it today now back to the show because you look at this stuff, and that's that's why I sound pissed off on the podcast. This is what Ed calls the rot economy. Yes, which the rot, is, which is the growth at all cost effect. Yeah, everyone is trying. Shareholder to grow. value must go up. But what everyone says is, oh, it's profits, right? <laughs> no, 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 it's revenue growth. So yeah. it's just what can make the company seem bigger. And Google should never have laid off anyone. They made ten billion dollars in, I think, ten billion dollars in profit yeah. last quarter, and. They had to pay $2 billion in severance fees. So it's like, what the fucking just... And they're going to hire all those... like In different... two years, they're going to hire all those same people back for those same jobs. And it's just crazy. Just because... without health insurance. Yes, exactly. No, contractors. Right. They're going well, to no, contractors. They, you, but they love doing that. Now, Google's generally good on the benefits, I hear, but who knows at this point. But it's just... It's very... For, and this is where my cynicism comes in, because I would love to be wrong. I look into this stuff, and I care a lot about being right on this. I don't want to be a generic cynicist. I don't want to be sitting there and saying, I'm a pessimist, or I just think it's all bad. If I feel bad about something, I want to tell people why, because I don't want to just be a firebrand. Oh, yeah, I'd be pissed off. But then you look, then you look and it's worse. It's worse than you thought. It's yeah. not, and it's just craven. In 2019, uh, the head of Google search at the time, uh, Ben Gomes, I think it was, he was, he put out something called the Code Yellow. If it was this big thing about how Google search was, there were problems with Google search. And one of the things he's returning too many P videos. Yeah, it's just PP. Code yellow. <laughs> Code uh, yellow. <laughs> yes, well, I had before I got here. Um, but he then put out a thing saying that ads, ads were getting too close 
to Google search that. It was a problem. A year later, Wait, he was... Ads were getting too close? As in the ads division of Google was getting yeah. too close oh, oh, to the too search chummy. side. Okay, yeah. And I'm going to fudge his name, but in 2020, he was replaced with a guy called Prabhakar... I forget his name, but he was replaced by the former head of ads for Google. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so good. It's so good. And so then, the separation is clear. Yeah, the separation <laughs> is clear. They are now mixed. And yeah. it's... And it stinks, and it stinks for everyone. It stinks for every single person. Every single person should be angry about this. And I know that sounds dramatic, but billions of people use Google search. It yeah. is, they bought the monopoly on your iPhone. They pay Apple billions of dollars every year. And that came out in a US antitrust suit. So billions of dollars to be on your iPhone. So everyone uses Google. No one's using Bing. You're not a Bing customer. Let's yeah. uh, use Bing by accident. Yeah, <laughs> And even then, by the way, if you go on Bing now, uh, it also offers you the chance to quiz its co-pilot AI. So the rot begins. How's that working? Not well. <laughs> Actually, great story. So during the Super Bowl, there was a minute-long commercial for Microsoft Copilot. Okay. One of the prompts was, do me a classic logo of a, sorry, a, a logo of a truck shop called Mike's Trucks. Okay. And uh, what's funny is, I don't know if you've used generative AI to do images. Uh, I have not. I've, I've seen it done, but I don't, I'm not. So they can't do words. Oh. They can't, you can't tell it to reliably put mics on there. Now, in the commercial, it's like, mics, mics, mics. These are beautiful options. In reality, what you get is like Cthulhu language. like, it's really, oh, really? weird. Can, we, can you yeah, try that You can probably do this time? live. You might have to, uh, a Make classic car... A car, <laughs> make a picture cool of a mics. car storage building. Also, it does like two steering wheels. Because you have to remember with these models, they don't know anything. Yeah. They're not intelligent. They don't yeah. have intelligence. What they do, however, is they look at a huge data set and they say, here is what Mike's means. Here's what truck means. Here's what truck shop. And they get it pretty right. But they don't get it right, right. They no, don't they know get... what a truck looks like. Yeah. Well, it's the same. It's the same exact thing. With a with a lot of quote self driving cars, yeah, it's like they won't get drunk or get tired, but they will make other mistakes that are incomprehensible to a human. You know, does it? Did it find anything? I may have broken it. Wokeness. We break it. The, the Woke, wo wokeness stopped. The, but the, it's funny as well though, because the other prompts in the commercial were like, "Do the code for my three D open world game." Now, I've run every single one of these queries. If you do that, it gives you a few paragraphs about how to code a game. It doesn't give you the code. Mm -hmm. The only one I didn't do is there was what quiz me about my chemistry final. I failed chemistry. I probably know about as much as chat GPT, if not less. But every prompt in it came up with just the shittiest version. Just the absolute dog shittiest version you've ever seen. And it's because these things, like I said, don't know anything. They're just basically copying someone else's homework at scale. Yeah. But the big thing is AI people will tell you, well, it's not good now, but it will be in the future. Untrue. Well, based on what? The, the, the source material is not getting better well, or more accurate. It's based on the fact that between before 2022, like November 2022, when ChatGPT came out, that was a pretty big shift. What people don't realize is that was the result of 20 years of research and development uh -huh. here and billions of dollars of investment. And on top of that, to your point about the training data, they're running out of it. They don't have enough. And on top of that... Even if they had reams of it, they can't do 100%. They yeah. can't. You, If you tell a model not to say something it isn't confident in, the model will choose not to answer at all. It's a Wall Street Journal story about this with uh, uh, enterprise sales in generative AI. It's insane. And it's like a tech industry-wide delusion at the moment. Uh, Mita Murai, probably saying a name wrong, the CTO of OpenAI, was interviewed by Wall Street Journal's Joanna Stern the other day. And she said, so do you train yourself your video, because they have this thing called Sora now that generates videos. Yeah. Uh, do you train yourself on YouTube? And Mita made this voice like, like, I'm not sure. And she made this like really very strange looking face. He just like very clearly like, I didn't expect to be asked the world's most obvious question. And the answer is yes. Yeah. They definitely, she said no. She said, I'm not sure uh, if it was publicly available maybe. And what's crazy is, that's the CTO of the most important tech company. They definitely st they definitely downloaded all of YouTube, which is insane. The copyright things are insane. It's all insane. It's it can't live without plagiarism. Is it's, it possible to download all of YouTube? Uh, if they're doing it in the way that they would have to, it would be have they have to do it very subtly. Yeah, it's not impossible, but you'd have to probably decentralize that whole effort. That would be nuts. It would be nuts if they've done anything like that. Google alone will. 
eat their, they're eating their souls. But also, one has to ask, if Google ever does a video thing, are they training on YouTube? A hundred percent. And that's the thing. If they're doing that, that's also a copyright we've thing. I mean, we've probably somewhere allowed them to do that. Oh, well, somewhere some, in terms Somewhere and in some terms and conditions, we allowed yes. them to do that. But Mickey, or will. But They'll Mickey, send me an email going, the terms and conditions have been updated, and it'll be 50,000 words. And I'll be like, oh, all right, Yeah, sure, fuck whatever. it, I don't care. But Disney, however, won't take that. There are episodes of Mickey Mouse's Playhouse uh -huh. on there. And if you've taken one Mickey Mouse's Playhouse and used that, yeah. Disney will come and destroy you. They'll go down your family. Disney will kill your ass <laughs> dead. <laughs> Were you able to get an image at all? No. Nothing? I think, oh, I, yeah. think I was using the chat interaction. Oh, no, no, it should work. Oh, that it should work. work. Try a diff let's try one other, one other uh, question. Well, this is the one and only time we'll ever go to Bing. All right, let's see. Let's, so, uh, let's you have to, so co pilot. You have to co -pilot. Okay. okay. Ask, let's see. Uh, designer. Where's you designer? designer? Oh, you click designer that. on okay. the right. Okay. And then like, classic so, trucks, truck How truck. about this? How about uh, uh, show me. Uh, a, just do an easy one. Show me a old shop truck for a shop called Matt's. Sure. That's pretty close yeah. to what you well, said. Give it a gather. Show me an old shop called Matt's. Matt's Towing. This will be funny. Let's yeah. Let's see. Let's see <laughs> if that let's actually. Let's see what gives you us, got. Let's see if that actually gives a. I know someone is out there is like fucking boomers. God don't damn know, it! Don't know how to use fucking AI. Which is so good because that's a pretty basic request. This should that's be not easy. difficult. And I am really curious to see what it spits out because a lot of these things are just very bad. How long does it normally take? Uh, it should be faster than this. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, well, we have we have good internet. We have very very yeah, very yeah. fast oh, internet here. Might have to sign in maybe. I don't know. It's very frustrating because it. Bullshit. Might have to sign in, but I don't, who, does anyone in have a, a Microsoft, Microsoft account? <laughs> I think we do for Forza. I'm tr I'm trying to find oh. like an but example. But I don't. I mean, I I don't have it handy. Whatever, doesn't um, matter. Oh well, you probably find it online. Sorry, Bing, you you have failed us. Um, you failed us. Do, from uh, one thing that w while we're still on the AI thing that I didn't realize, is you is you right that that uh, Etsy is full of AI products, oh, which so grim. to me is whoa. Yeah. So is it like. Is it that they're not real, or is it like an on-demand, like, if I were to buy this AI-generated product, does someone then make me the thing and send it's it to me? It's a mixture like of very depressing things. So there are just e-books full of AI-generated oh, slop. yeah. And then there are people selling T-shirts of any artwork you want. You can ask oh, them to okay. do anything, and they type it into Bing when it works, and it spits out an image, and they put it on the thing. Oh, okay. And it is a huge argument on there because people are like, hey, I make things with my hands. Why the fuck is this here? Yeah. And they're like, well, it's technically art. And Etsy does not give a shit because they're a public company and growth, 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 growth. That's the whole fucking game. It sucks. It's That's a, a bummer because I like things on Etsy. I, I, I bought We've my, gotten a ton of shit off I got there. two Bengal cats, and I bought a cat tree off of there, yeah. a heavy-duty one because otherwise they'll tear it to shit. Yeah, yeah. And it was great. Yeah. And it was like a real artis artisan who made it. Well, gotten, Etsy's like a mix of a flea market type thing where people will actually make the thing, but then Amazon sellers who just buy a thing that's made in a yeah, drop country. Ship. Yeah, like and that's what a lot of it too, is as weird. well, like drop shipped crap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it sucks. It sucks because these stores are like, they're engaging in actually similar logic to the Substack thing where it's like, oh, well, you know, we want to give an, we want to give options for everyone. We want to give it, let everyone do everything because, you know, we don't want to be a closed off marketplace. And I think that they know better. They yeah. definitely know better. They just don't give a fuck. They're just like, ah, little pigs will buy it anyway. Yeah, and like, you know, a couple a couple writers will complain about it, but like there won't be some mass exodus from people using Etsy. And what they don't realize is there will be a slow bleed. Yeah, yeah. And there will be a slow bleed, and they won't have any idea what it is, and they will realize, that, and then they will be in a situation where most of their money comes from crap, so they can't ban it. Mm -hmm. But they need to stop it, and they need to slow it down. So they'll be intentionally killing revenue to build what? A worse business for them? Yeah. A better product, but a yeah. worse business? And Etsy's nearly died several times, so why not so, Why not again? It's just this sort of like that, that growth at all costs uh, economy is just so fucking bad for 
everyone else that's yes. not just a shareholder in the short term. And even it's not great for shareholders either because when it falls down, it falls down so hard, so very hard. When growth slows, when that's – it's very fickle Yeah. in that when growth slows, it's not like these investors are like, well, I believe in the company. They're like, oh, I believed in the company when it showed growth, but fuck them now. Yeah. I hope the same happens to Tesla. It's actually – Tesla has begun to slow down. Well – you know, we uh, not to not to beat a dead horse, but someone brought a Cybertruck by here yesterday. I wanted to see one so bad. Well, if you, I don't think I've ever seen a consumer product where the people who make it think their customers are dumber than this truck. Yeah. Because forget how it drives. Forget yeah. that there is some interesting tech underneath there. Sure. This is the shoddiest made hundred thousand dollar vehicle in the history of cars. Yeah. If I bought a two thousand dollar refrigerator, and it ha it was put together like this, I would fucking be returning it in two seconds. None of the panels cool. fit together properly. <laughs> I mean, really, it's fucking garbage. And like, so I'm actually planning a Cybertruck episode. Yeah, I mean, you, our friend Kyle will let you drive it. Uh, he's he's a he's a he's a tech reviewer. He bought it for his YouTube channel. He has he doesn't he's not like. He's straight up honest about everything it is and is not. He will let you drive it. I actually might. I might take it. Because yeah, I wanted should. to do a Cybertruck episode, but I don't just want to be like, I know last time we bagged on Elon a lot. And like, as we should, he's a piece of shit. But it's also like a lot of the stuff just being like, vehicle dumb. <laughs> versus practical looking at it and being like, this is on wrong. This no, is no, bad. it is objectively horribly I made. cannot wait to... Play with Forget it. what you think. I mean, oh no, I want, and that's the thing. Zach was cutting fucking cardboard using the edges of the body panel yeah, on video yesterday. Yeah. Could you fry an egg on it if it gets real hot? Oh, probably. I mean, you probably yeah. could, but but like, I don't know if it would get hotter necessarily than like a black painted panel. Uh, that would that that would. I'm sure someone could do a test on it, but like the fucking nose of it, where the quarter panel, the hood, and the flat, like mm -hmm. that is a razor blade. Sweet. If you hit someone with that, it will tear Not their skin off style. of their fucking body. Oh, it's crazy. And that one's definitely a growth at all costs thing, but that's also just like, this is what happens when you let Elon take the wheel. Yeah, this they is... also build like pretty decent regular ass cars. I was in a Model Y the other day. Yeah, it's like, fine. Like, it was fine. It was actually like surprisingly, I was surprised by, I don't like the Model 3. I think it's kind of claustrophobic. I just saw the new one mm -hmm. this morning. I saw Any someone goods? driving the new one. I, I thought it looked or, nice. Over here. The refresh. Yeah, I we still saw think the whole. Yeah, I thought, it, I actually thought it looked pretty nice. I just mm -hmm. wish it had a normal screen and a normal, like, I mean, yeah. What, yeah, whatever you think about that, like, it's the, the regular cars are like fine. I wish they just. But like this thing, it's like you have some real distinct for your customers yeah. selling well, them expensive things that it's a are this badly built. It's a homemobile. It rocks. I would love to bring it to show it to some Porsche engineers. They'd fucking piss their pants laughing at this thing. Any of them in LA? Huh? Like, they'll, they'll, be, <laughs> they'll be around. No, that's kind of the, like, because <laughs> thinking about how I want to do the episode, I think that that is the best thing you can do. They won't do anything on the record. They'll, they'll, they're too professional. I'll get them on like, uh, get them on like a uh, voice. Like, they they will, will, yeah. call, yeah, that would be so funny. Backlight them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, we don't do well, It's like yet. a vice doc on drug making, just having them in a ski mask. And, you know. <laughs> this guy who I'm calling Mr. Pink. Yeah. Yeah, be, yeah. His jacket is suspiciously tight. <laughs> <laughs> it says Lamar's on it. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, and it, and like it drove like a Tesla, like fine, whatever. But f the quality of it was absolutely abysmal. I did enjoy watching the YouTube videos of the real Tesla mm -hmm. heads, like desperately trying to like, oh, I love this. I love changing the gear thing on the ceiling. Oh, it's it's so good. Oh, I love that. Look, Marcus Brownlee was like, oh, it's so roomy. No, it fucking isn't. I used to have a Ford F one fifty. Beautiful roomy truck. Great for going it's, forwards, backwards, side to side. You can put stuff in the back. It's a beautiful truck. It's like, what, 40, 40 grand? Like, yeah, I mean, it's, like, it's it's no more or less roomy than any other fucking thing of that size. Yeah, I, true. I just, it's very big. But it's also, big. there's space inside, but you'd expect I that. Just, well, like, I just, and that's the thing. Like, if Elon Musk wants people to stop making fun of him, maybe he should stop doing dumb things that are very easy to make fun I, of. Maybe make a good car. 100% <laughs> with you on well, that. Well, on a related note of what we talked about earlier with the lack of R&D with product, uh, uh, Fisker, like, Ooh, yeah. baby. this week yeah. is, you know, shopping around for bankruptcy assistance. Yeah. Again? Yeah. I thought they go bankrupt every few years and they, then someone else buys them. They, like another they, Chinese they holding company. Stop their, their, their stock price is like 48 cents. Well, it was, it has been going down since 2020. And then uh, Marcus Brownlee did a video on February 14th, I think. Yeah, like he called he it tested the worst a, a dealership car. Driven. And 
it had all these bugs and stuff. And we've heard bad things before, but since then, their prices. I tried like to review cents. one and failed at it. How do you fail to review a car? It was they brought it to me, mm-hmm. and it was so fucked up and bad that I just said, "Come get this." It, what? Le- it left me stranded three times in twelve hours. Okay, yeah. At that point, it you're was, not really reviewing a vehicle, and it wasn't like, yeah, the, like I tried to. <laughs> yeah. The car wouldn't let me. It was so. They bad. look great, but it sounds like they just they sent something out that was not baked. They, they yeah, just, and it, and the problems that we had with it were not problems that should happen to anyone building cars. Like the thing, it had a regular like key fob thing, right. like. Vehicle would not detect key fob. Like, it just wouldn't. You'd have to, like, put it next to the steering column and then take it away and lock it up. I've had that problem with my Tesla, but, yeah. I mean, which is gone. I've got a Volvo XC40. I know, you asked. Beautiful beautiful vehicle. Go normal car. But, like, (laughs) it's one thing if you come up with some fucking new tech, like, and, and then it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay? But, like... If you can't fucking make a key fob work <laughs> in 2024, <laughs> just just give up. You can't turn on a car yeah. and make it go places. Like you get in and I would hit the stock to go to drive and it would say it would say gear selector not recognized. Like if you can't Wait, make what? a fucking gear stock work into, you know, <laughs> like just the most the most basic What do you shit mean not, not detected? Do. It's connected to the it's fucking physically car. Physically connected. It's part well, it's, of I mean it's it's a it's a it's a it's a wire. It's not, you know, it's not a mechanical Drive, but the car but, shouldn't. No, of course it was. It was bad. All of it was bad. I said. I said, come get. How this. did? Didn't I that company get big for like, their cars exploding? No, I I there was a Hurricane was. Sandy thing where a bunch of them exploded. Oh, yeah. Well, there was. Remember the Fisker Karmas. Yeah. They got they, flooded. They got flooded. They got yeah, flooded. Flooded. Yeah, but the flooding blew up. I think some caught on fire. But but it was if you flood, flood. If you saltwater flood electric cars, uh, very weird things happen. But if you saltwater flood, no, but that flood. was when cyber truck. It's a boat. Cyber truck so, is a boat. Cyber truck <laughs> is a boat. Speaking, <laughs> of, speaking of flooding electric cars, Jesus Christ. Angela Chow. Angela Chow. The swipey gear shiftery thing. That shit should not be legal. I, well, as we've learned. I've, you got to read it. I tell everyone to read it. How safe is safe enough? Phil Koopman's book. Okay. And it, we have learned that shit that should not be legal is <laughs> the way our country works. Is you can pretty much fucking do anything you want, and it only becomes illegal later if enough people die because of it. Cool. That's how our country works. Very good. It's totally cool and normal and fun. America rules. Um, and yeah, how, how safe is safe enough? By Phil Koopman. No. Can't recommend it highly enough. It's a, it's mainly about AV development, but also stuff like this. Um, so yeah, Elaine Chao, former uh, transportation secretary under Trump. Her sister has a Tesla, uh, I believe Model X, and uh, fucking puts that shit in the the wrong gear. Drives Go, into something. Goes into a lake. Yeah. Uh, a pond, even. Mm-hmm. Does not know how to operate the manual door uh, releases to get out. I don't even know how. I, I, had, I had Teslas for years. I don't even know how. Would the, there is a way. It's I'm not sure. that hard. Now, granted, under a panic situation, yeah. maybe a different story. And, uh, and drowns. Fucking, drowns in the car. Fucking disgraceful. I mean, yeah. And one incident, data is not. But still, that's a pretty high-profile person <laughs> to be uh, dying in but a car. But also, that is a direct reason why... They should be banning that thing, like, dude. Sh- I, I, should, I don't even mean the car, just that form of gear shifter. I also like mechanical door locks and mechanical door so releases. I love my XC40s, yeah. just physical handles. Door, I like. I really prefer that physical kind of volume stuff. knob. It's beautiful. Well, well that right. leads us to our our main uh, our main topic. Wow. It took them an hour. I'm just reading about the story. Emergency f- folks were on standing on the car when it was in the water, trying to break into the windows using. Pike poles and Halligan bars, and it took them uh, an hour yeah. to break into it. Well, the original, I, I read Was that, that the, the, emer- pressure? the emergency crews that showed uh, maybe, up but uh, break the windows? Uh, were nervous about going into the water because they didn't know about, oh. they, didn't, they were worried about a high voltage battery. Turns out that that actually isn't how it works. Like they wouldn't have been shocked or anything like that. But um, yeah, I think the windows on those cars are really strong. Mm. And, uh, but also, if there was water in there, the water pressure might have. I don't know much science stuff. I don't know. Fucking great. Yeah, I don't. I don't exactly. know. It doesn't say if if the car had filled with water at that point or not. So I'm not sure. That's but so that's so sad. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is. So, but but that leads us to uh, to our our main topic today. Um, five times that tech ruined cars. Okay. And and I have these as a, as general technologies. Uh, that haven't necessarily made cars more dangerous, but have definitely made them suck more. Okay. 
Um, so your uh, your reactions to any of these? My number one: EVs that eliminate the start stop button. There's okay. Teslas and other cars, other EVs. The Lucid. Um, does Rivian have a start start stop button? I forget. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't like getting in the car and stepping on the brake and yeah. having it turn on. I want to be able to boop on, boop off. Yep. There are people, there's going to be people who are like, okay, old guy yelling at clouds. They well, really I mean, like this technology. I like to have more control it. over when something starts. And like, I also want to be able to turn it on without yeah. moving it. Like, yeah. uh, and I also think with electric vehicles, there's just not enough delineation between on and going. That's true. And that was a big thing with the Tesla. So you, so you touch it and it would light up. Was it on? I don't know. They, There's I'm this s- in between on and off yeah. that happens all the time. Where like, okay, I've now, I've now, I'm stopped. I'm parked, but I'm supposed to just like get out of this yeah, thing my, and walk away, and it's like still on, and I'm supposed to trust that it's just going to turn off. That's there's still that me. a bit with the Volvo, but it is a delightfully normal car. Yeah, I love how normal it is. It's XC40. Yeah, it's so yeah. normal. Yeah, I drove it uh, from I bought it in California, at least it in California. Uh, because it was just r- remarkably cheaper. Mm-hmm. Drove it all the way back to Vegas. Lovely trip. Yeah. Three, three, four hours. Drove like a dream. Lovely, normal vehicle. It's uh, it's reach. It's electric one? Yeah. So yeah. Like 220 miles. I had to top up on the way, but it yeah. charged, charged fine. And I wish that that was where people were going with EVs, if they just make them more normal. But it seems they're making them more weird. <laughs> there, uh, some. I'd love some, to be wrong. Uh, well, some are. I mean, uh, uh, the so, like, like actually, like BMWs, um, EVs. Uh, they're pretty much like regular BMWs That's that great. happen to be. That electric. makes me really well, happy. Well, Audi's got the cross. I, mean, I think there are a lot of normal EVs, but the ones that get the attention are the super fast ones, or the Plaid, or Nevada. Mustang was nice like though. Yeah, yeah, ours. My, yeah. yeah, my Ford is is pretty normal. Just happens yeah. to be electric. I, I think when you have a startup company like a Lucid or a Rivian or a Tesla, they try to really make a big splash by doing stuff. From what I've seen of Rivian so far, their stuff seems remarkably normal for a startup. Well, they drive really good and they're, they're built re- really well. They're really so nice. Yeah. 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 I might, maybe I'll do a Rivian next. You should try and drive one. They're cool. Wanna... They drive really good. Yeah. I w- they weren't available when I was buying um, and I'll, but eliminating el- any physical tr- control you can eliminate saves you money, right? Of course. F- buttons, knobs, those things cost money. Like I'm driving the ludicrously expensive Rolls Royce Spectre right now, which is an electric Rolls Royce. There is almost no difference in how it drives from a gasoline Rolls Royce, which is very funny. That's cool. Gasoline Rolls Royces are very smooth. Oh yeah, they're just quiet and quiet. <laughs> and so an electric power f- powertrain, as we've said many many times, benefits a cheaper economy car much more so than it benefits a Rolls Royce. Right. Because a Rolls Royce was so smooth and refined anyway. So the to drive one, it's almost identical to the gasoline car. Um, and they've still got lots of knobs, lots of physical buttons, really, the, and the knobs are, they're heavy and they're chrome and they've got a leather trim around well, them. Nice. And, and it's those kinds of physical controls that, that in today's age say luxury. It's the, like oh, the minimalism of the, of the Cybertruck to me and, and those types of cars say, it's 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 pitched as minimalism, but it's really just cheap. It's, yeah. it's super cheap. It's the, there's an Aikwood comic about this where they uh, add a new thing for your phone that has testicles on it, <laughs> and the the expensive one it has three testicles, but the most expensive one, I think it's by Carlo. I fucked that name up, didn't I? Some oh, someone's gonna rip me in the comments for this, but it's just a single ball. It's like solo. <laughs> And it's just like, that's all I think of. It's like, oh, so it's more expensive, but it's... But it's less. Yeah, like lingerie. But but you know what? You can do do cool things with that. Like, what makes, like, I don't know, been a while since being in a Ferrari, but, like, what makes them isn't the new shit. It's how well-made it is, how luxurious it feels, how... Well, that's what we're saying downstairs. You, you, they, at a, to a certain point, they add tech, and then beyond that point, they start taking it away. And going back to the animal. I quite like the BMW that has the massive TV in the back, but I think that practically speaking, that would be very annoying. Oh, yeah, the yeah. big, like, 7 The, the widescreen, yeah, yeah, the i7. If you've got a driver, sure. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, on uh, a related note, wait. one of my top yeah. things at Rune Tech is capacitive buttons. Oh yeah, well, capacitive like hap- buttons. Capacitive Hate them. haptic buttons. Difficult to just hit. Just the worst. Uh, yes. You have to you have to look to make sure Mash you them. press it correctly. And it's on cheap cars. It's on expensive cars. It's on like it's on the Porsches. On a lot of the. Functions. I have this one as well. Yeah, that these are so. these are not good. And yes. it's and we like that tech. That tech is what makes this touchpad work. It's what yeah. makes the phone work. But you have but to do it right. You do have to do it right. And, and right now, I'm not like driving a vehicle down the road at 70 miles an yeah. hour. I can just look at the screen. Yeah, and you, move it, the mouse you have around. to take your eyes off the road <clears throat> very frequently to use a haptic button. It's not good. Mm-hmm. I also just feel like touch screens in general have been very bad for cars. I don't understand how the Model Three even works. How you can like take your eyes off the road to see the speed. It's just a very worrying car. And they they. They cover the, their, themselves on that by saying, well, we have voice commands. It's like nobody wants to talk to their car either. Yeah. Voice commands. BMW got I have a British control. accent and I live in America. Gesture control was stupid. It was very bad. But Gesture yeah. control is a very funny idea. <laughs> it was funny. For a car, that is one of the funniest things you can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'd like, you'd like aim two fingers at the vent and it would like turn the stereo on. But I did that while reviewing Wizard. this 850. I was like, you know, gesturing as I do while talking and all of a sudden the radio turned on in the middle of the review because I had done the yeah, gesture yeah. that says turn on stereo. That yeah, sucks. Very silly, yeah. Exactly. Does Howard. it involve a knuckle? You can't be that <laughs> Italian and drive this car, you know? You're just, you're going to you start conducting hands, music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, me and Musso, we'd, we'd, we'd just operate the stereo yeah. by accident. My next one goes back to the 1990s, okay. actually. Biodegradable wiring harnesses. Yes. You're going to have to walk me through this one. So in the 90s, some European car manufacturers, particularly Mercedes, decided to make an attempt to be environmentally friendly by making their vehicle wiring harnesses, which control all the electronics in the vehicle, biodegradable. And you're oh. not going to believe what happened next. Did they degrade over <laughs> they time? They fucking degraded. And, they, and if it degrades, it wrecks the car. Yeah. And the rest of the car is, as one might expect from a 1990s Mercedes, truly built to last. <laughs> so you just got this so very... Got this huge brick. How long did this phenomenon go on for? 1991 to 96. Yeah. Uh, that, oh, okay. There. Which is like otherwise peak Mercedes tank-like quality. <laughs> right. So you just got these vast, amazing vehicles that yeah. just uh, die I think, in. I think it was a rule in Europe that car companies had to make one aspect biodegradable. And, like, Mercedes went wiring. Yeah. BMW went interior glue. Yes. Tesla chose the passenger. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, biodegradable wiring That's harnesses. So good, man. Not good. <laughs> I actually, I think for me it is just voice control. I think voice is just a uniquely bad thing for cars. Yeah. And... You'd think it's one of those things which may make sense in your phone, but the way we use voice, even on Alexa, is not the same as how we use a vehicle. In fact, voice control and talking is taking your attention off the road. Um, I agree with you most of the time. However, once Siri and CarPlay were integrated into cars, I use it a little more. When it was like a proprietary set of commands for each car, it was like, oh, fuck no. So I'm a British man in America. Yeah. And let me tell you, the voice things don't like me very much. Yeah. Even when I change Siri to British. What if you drive a Morgan or a Jaguar or something? Is it better? <laughs> never driven one. Never used their voice things. I changed Siri over. to an Indian man. So I feel like I'm calling customer service. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't love that one. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. We'll yeah, I, one listen, I didn't fucking outsource customer <laughs> service. The mic. I didn't outsource it to India. That shit ain't my fault. But nevertheless, uh, I just find voice control also doesn't ever do. What I would like it to do is always more nuanced than what it can do. Mm-hmm. And also, I just want to be able to hit a fucking button, man. I know I sound like a hundred year old man, but I learned to drive on a Volvo S60. I grew from very simple vehicle. I've never found fancy cars immediately impressive. I like some of them are very cool to drive. Like it feels interesting to drive a Ferrari. Like it was ooh, drove in Germany. It was cool. But at the same time it's like otherwise it is a tool. And when you look at it as a tool, most of these things are just obfuscating its ability to drive places. Yeah. And it's the same I again, Sam tech guy, but I hate touch screens. I don't think they the Volvo is fairly still has some. I don't love that. But at least it's simple. And when I had a Model S, the touchscreen on that was great. It was fantastic because all it wanted to do was control your music, control your uh, navigation. It was perfect. Big fucking map in the middle of the car. That's great. 
but this idea that I need to look away and that I now need to control everything by touchscreen, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just, I I'm, sound very boomery, but... No, touch, like, there is a law that says that we are not allowed to use our handheld touchscreen while we are driving. Right. But if that touchscreen is over here on the dash, no fucking problem. And if your whole dash is made of touchscreen, even better. I kinda, like I kind of like how the Mercedes looks, but as a practical vehicle, I oh, just, the hyperscreen thing, it's not. It's not. It's too if much. If you drove it, you it's might dislike it. I don't know. Well, that's a lot going on with that one. I'm, yeah, too much in fact. Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. I I know why they're doing it it's so that they can say it's new. It's the yeah, growth at all costs for cars. Of course. Well, and Mercedes is historically Mercedes cars have always, especially at, at the top, have always had the most tech. Yeah, and they take the piss a bit. I mean, they, I I mean go, that. you go back to the to the 600 grocer, you know, which is like their luxury limo from like the 60s mm -hmm. and early 70s, and they had all kinds of crazy shit in that thing. Uh, the you know the I had a I had a 1996 uh, was that fucking S690. I bought a cheap like. $2,000 V12 Mercedes okay. S600 on Craigslist. It's like a 97, right, 200,000 miles. And it had the, the center mirror was power operated Ooh. from here. Like, who the fuck needs that? Not for the time, though. Like, <laughs> like, I'm driving a 2024 Rolls Royce right now that doesn't even have that. My, my, dad, <laughs> my dad's still driving a Renault Espace. Was just in, yes. was just in London. My dad has had that fucking car for 20 years. Is it that really weird looking one? No, it's just a regular looking. Okay. You don't even get, it's like a small, it's like a three quarter size Toyota Sienna. Yeah. It's very weird. Like, you couldn't sell them in America because America must have big. But he's had this goddamn thing for 20 years. At one point, it got, like, nicked and then damaged. And, like, it still goes. Yeah. I hate the fucking thing. It's just, oh, but also it has, like, a, it so doesn't one even. Of, like, one of those? Yeah, but it's, um, oh, not an Espace, then it's, uh, no, it's a Citroen. Sorry, oh. of course, that's the whole fucking joke, isn't it? <laughs> it's a Citroen. It's some fucking it's, French it's, thing. I don't yeah, know. It's, it's, it's the Aventime is the really it's like weird a looking small, one. That's the one version of that. It's like the old Mazda MP5. But that thing's built like a fucking tank. Yeah, it's the Zara, that one. The it's oof. probably from 2001, too. It's grey. He, my dad oh, has taste. That is a jelly bean right there. <laughs> yeah, that is, is, that <laughs> is a disgusting looking. That is a, all that glass that's wish.com. I bet the visibility is spectacular. That's wish.com wish Mercedes A-Class. A a, yeah, it's just a regular car that drives and it doesn't have a color screen. Yeah. It doesn't even have Bluetooth. That's Actually, no, maybe it has Bluetooth. Maybe that was the one for It has the, um, zero tech, but it has uh, tray tables yes. on the backs of seats. Oh, that's fantastic. I was just like, why? Like, I saw that when I got in. I'm like, ah. They, they got to bring back tray tables. Tray oh, tables were all right. That's good. What else you got, Zach, on your list? CVTs. Oh, yes. Uh, strangely, invented by Da Vinci, and then um, they were put in a motorcycle in 1910. Okay. And some guy named Milton Reeves put them in a car in 1896. Wow. But uh, they got banned from hill climbs because they work too well. Yeah. Because it just it allows a car to use the maximum uh, power in its power band, and then the gears constantly change. So the, the engine is always operating. It never it's most efficient. Right. And it never has to shift. But they sound terrible. Yeah. It's like you, you accelerate in any car. I've driven Accords with them. I've driven fast cars with them. And as you accelerate, it just goes, and then the sound just stays there. Yeah. And it's just, it's like being terrible on a plane. to use. Do they still exist? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Oh, they are Why very Why do they get common. chosen versus they are, hugely efficient? They are very efficient automatics. Mm. Uh, so Nissan uses them, Subaru uses them. Subaru um, brought them to the mainstream. Is yeah. that why 70s? Subaru sounds so bad? Yeah. Well, well no. that's unequal length headers. Yeah, so flat four engines sound weird. They're not for everybody. But they, they're a way for companies to get max MPG out of you know any engine, basically. Like, it is the most efficient solution, huh. but just, I hate interacting they're, with it. They're not good to use. If you, if you don't care about cars, you might not even Do you find them in, like, cheap? Like yeah. work vehicles as well, like uh, not necessarily work vehicles because they're not particularly like tough, oh. but they're in like economy cars. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're in a, they're in a, a automatic transmission equipped economy cars would use them. Why can't you make them quieter and sound less bad? Well, the nature of the gearbox oh. is that is that the engine will be in its optimum RPM. Oh, so it's the it's right. the engine you're so actually yeah, the optimizing yeah, yeah, the sound. The gearbox oh, yeah, doesn't yeah. sound like anything. Yes, it's just it's that just like rather than going. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just gunning it. It just kind of sits there at, at like 3,800 so like the time I drove a smart car on the highway. 
Yeah. The opposite of that. Well, smart it's how it sounded. Are, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. They, have, they have really bad gearboxes, smart cars. Uh, my next one, proximity keys, proximity fobs. Yeah. I, I Going back 30 years, I had one in my Corvette in the 90s, disaster. We've had one in the in the Lucid Air we tested. Disaster. But when they're good, I like them. Keyless entry, I'm a fan. I like keyless, keyless entry. Yeah. is fine, but a keyless entry, you you grab the door yeah, handle to unlock it. I'm talking about proximity, where you walk away 20 feet, it locks. You get closer, it unlocks. You walk oh, away. that yes, Prox- if it's automatic proximity. proximity yeah. Yeah, automatic. yeah, that's just very annoying. The one in the in the Lucid Air, and I like the Lucid Air in a lot of ways. But we we went we went to a Pearl Jam concert and we tailgated in the parking lot. Right. And this goddamn thing must have locked and unlocked a hundred fucking times in an hour, and my wife lost her mind. Like, what the fuck is wrong with this car? <laughs> and because it was, like, turning on and off, too, because it's an electric, doesn't have a start button. Like, the music would turn on and off. Oh, like, the lights just going crazy. on? Crazy. It was nuts. So Tesla has that, but I think you can turn it off, but I couldn't work out how uh, for a probably while. Probably through the app or something. Yeah. And it's probably just user error, just to be clear. But it was very annoying every time you walked up to the car. It's like it just slightly opened the door. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, go away. It's oh, to- yeah, the, the presenting of the door. I don't need the it's door. It's an over-eager I, I have hands you know, to open yeah, it. Yeah. I will yeah. o- and that's the thing. Most vehicles are getting away from this idea that human hands work. Yeah, and yeah. just to be clear, this is not Cy- an accessory. Cybertruck's trying to cut them off. But an ex- so. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> won't need them where we're going. Um, but I think, just to be clear, that's separate to the accessibility side. I imagine for disabled people, stuff like this is magical and powerful and great. For them, this is great. I think for the majority of people, it isn't. Yeah. And also, it isn't being put in for accessibility. It's being no. put in to put in a fucking investor deck. Yeah, yeah. It's so that they can sell to dickheads who like Elon Musk. And I don't know. I've heard some bad things about Lucid. I'm surprised you like them. They drive great. Well, they drive great. They drive really nice. Okay. They're they're not without their faults, and I think the 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 way the company operates maybe not not so great. Not so great. I don't I don't know. I don't just, drive that much. <laughs> they're nice to drive. Okay. They are very nice to drive, and they are very aerodynamically efficient, uh, and their powertrains are very efficient, and they can go a really fucking long way on one charge. Tate, when I was in London, I saw a lot of pole stars. Yeah. Great vehicle. Much more popular in Europe than here. Yeah, like a lot of a them. A lot more popular than in Europe and here, than here. But they're all right. No, my mate Casey drives one. It's a lovely car. Yeah, they're, they're well, a, basically a Volvo. Yeah, so yeah. Volvo, like beautiful. It, yeah. I wish they'd take... I like, I'm like, oh, I hate growth at all costs company in their own, but like a Chinese mega conglomerate. But yeah. yeah. You know what? I don't mind if that's if it ends up with good stuff, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I sort of agree with you, but I think they've, so far... They've allowed Volvo to be Volvo, mm-hmm. and and that's good. Yeah. Like, if they're just giving money and Volvo can be Volvo and sort of survive. Printing Swedish like, money. Yeah. Like, I, 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 a company that makes quirky cars that are also, like, safe and, and good generally, yeah. like, that company shouldn't die off because it can't stand on its own as not as not. I also being think car it. companies are probably less – interested in the massive growth model. I mean, they want to massively grow, but also there are a limited amount of people buying cars, yeah, and if yeah. you make it one shit car, yeah. it, people will not buy another one. Right. Yeah. They mm. they make good cars. I, I definitely, I think you're you're right there, yeah. Uh, what else you got? Push button transmissions. Mm. Not the first generation, 50s, 60s. So elaborate on this one for them. What do you mean by that? I, I mean, like, in the, in the 50s and 60s, you would have buttons on the left side of the steering wheel, I believe, that looked like an old cash register, and that's park, reverse, neutral, drive. And you'd push those, and that mm-hmm. would activate the gear. I agree. I think it looks bad in cars that otherwise mostly look good in the inside. But at the time, I could see them going, we've got this new exciting technology called buttons. Holy yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. we can put it in a car. <laughs> Some real but, jet age shit. But, yeah. But yeah. when they brought it back, uh, Lincoln had it. Um, what car did we just drive? The Maserati had it. Yeah. Right? The new Maserati Jeep Aston, Gran Turismo has it. The Aston for a while up until the current generation. That wasn't God, great. I would be so pissed off if I bought an Aston Martin. They it, had it, it from it, 2001 it until cheap. literally 2024. Jesus I think, Christ. I think it feels cheap. I think most of the time it takes up way too much real estate in the interior, so it looks very obtrusive. Ironically, they do it to save up real estate where the cup holders I know, but would, I, would I like the... Thing. A lot of people I like do. The thing it makes. Or it, if you're going to minimize it, Mercedes, the little stock, 
Little stock. That's is a good. pretty good solution for me, and that and it reacts Even really Tesla, quickly. Even Tesla, it was so good. Way. Tesla bought it off of them for a decade. Tesla used the Merce, literally but bought the Mercedes stock. shifter stock. I like that thing. Yeah, it yeah. was good. Have they taken that out of all Teslas now? Yeah, they're all swipey now. Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. <laughs> yeah, we're all doomed. <laughs> <laughs> no, so many your face just made it look like we're on a spaceship and I so, said we're out of fuel yeah, heading for the so, sun but so many more people are going to die they're yeah they're going to so get, many people going, are going to die because of this and well and, they now have predictive they now have a system where based on where you park and what the cameras around the car see it chooses what gear forward or reverse it thinks you want to be that's in. so good you know what tesla also had they had ai in their windscreen wipers that didn't work for years and oh yeah yeah that, that's what i i definitely want to trust my gearbox <laughs> to the ai that could not perform a u-turn when i returned my tesla i tr i i got self-driving the day i returned my model x uh-huh and i was like fuck it if I'm going to die, this will be the funniest way. And it very poorly navigated a four-way stop. It was like, ah, and just like turned off the automation. But then it got to the end, completely empty road, huge Vegas road as well. And I was like, okay. And it was like, warning, can't put it. And the next thing was just a U-turn. And it went, warning. And then it just stopped. Yeah. It was just like, you can't do a U-turn. Yeah, I'm going to trust you to know when I need to reverse. It's, yeah, no, it doesn't. It's yes, bad. It, it's, it's actually very, very, very epic. Of wokeness <laughs> is why you get the stick. The, the going for, going for, gearbox is awoke now. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah, last I remember one. your Elon impression is pretty good. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I pull that out whenever I can. The, wo the Oscars are basically a woke context. It's a woke context. Yeah. Woke okay, context. Man, whatever. Uh, phone as a key. Oh, fucking hell. Some people love this one. I've, I know some people that love it. I think it. it's good as an addition. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, you want an app. That yeah, is I'm good. fine with it as an addition. I, I like, think. and on my Ford, I can lock and unlock Same. the car with the app. But. I carry the fucking fob because I don't trust the phone to you be a good You trust the key. internet. You don't yeah. trust but Bluetooth is insanely unreliable. Yeah. It's well, and we've had I, – I totally understand why that idea came about. Oh, absolutely. But we've had – the execution of it has been problematic, and yeah. that's very scary. But yeah. the execution is also not the car manufacturer's fault other than the fact they chose it. It's a Bluetooth problem. Bluetooth is just mm -hmm. insanely unreliable, despite, what, five generations in? Because Qualcomm bought all the patents and one company owns most of Bluetooth. It's not great. Oh, oh wow. No, that's yeah, it's so no, good. No, but it's, you know why it's good? Because I have some Qualcomm stock. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, great no, I choice. Don't, I don't. They're not going I, anywhere. I, I, I don't even fucking know. I don't, I don't know, know what works index, there. No. I don't. I don't know what stocks I have because I don't care. Uh, uh, but... Uh, do they really own all the Bluetooth? Is Not all of it, but they own a massive amount of the codex and the Bluetooth technology and a lot of the Wi-Fi patents. They bought a bunch of hmm. patents. Was it CSC? I, I wrote a whole piece called um, Tech Out State, It's Welcome. There's a whole piece in it where I, you just watch Qualcomm buy one or two companies that have bought three or four companies. Oh, okay. And they just... So it's just the tree of it hovering. Is just, and they basically own the 5G infrastructure. It's really awesome. good. Awesome. And back then they had even weaker antitrust. Remember in the 60s? Well, none of us were no. there, but if you've ever read about it, there was going to be a merger between two shoe companies that together would have controlled like 15% of the national shoe market and the government stopped it with an antitrust. <laughs> that sounds so one sick. Of them, one of them was Florsheim shoes, which we've probably heard of because they're not really around anymore. Um but yeah, that was like the the government actually did its job and prevented these two companies from getting a little too and big. I get and why now, they, hmm. But I get with the Qualcomm thing why it might have been tough to put that through because that was really before the government had strong tech jobs and they barely do now. Right. They're better. This whole TikTok thing's ridiculous, but still they're better now. But back then it was what, 2011, 2012? And 2010s they were just like tech was doing massive things for the economy. It was a, like, there was there were good reasons why they wouldn't have looked too hard because it was like suddenly you had these massive things building American companies in America that the world used. That's why I think Tesla gets a pass on a lot of shit. Yes, because Tesla did, like him or not, Elon Musk did have a hand in popularizing electric vehicles. Tesla is still what the majority of electric vehicles like. There is a certain degree of. I don't know if it's a majority, but they're the best sell. The Model Y is the best selling. One, but regardless, sure. like he has a lot of the market, and yeah, it's a yeah. reason it popularized, and he built a lot of the infrastructure. Like he sucks, he's so bad, but 
there's something good that came from that. And also, yeah, you're right. He probably gets a free pass because who wants to be the politician? Now it's much easier. But back then, what? You want to just be like, we don't want this guy to do this thing that really no one else is doing. Yeah. Unless, of course, you thought ahead. But no one was. I wasn't. Yeah. I was like a three, four years into my career at that point. I didn't know shit from fuck. I wasn't until they started selling fake self-driving. And then I was like, oh, this guy's completely full of shit. For me, it was in 2018, 2017, 18, around the pedo guy thing. Mm. But he, the specific thing he did was he dogpiled. He sent his followers off for a woman called Erin Bieber. She's a writer. She's mm. great. And uh, he sent all his fucking freak fans after her. And they're horrifying sexist goblins. And no one said shit. There was Daily Beast part, piece about it. Jesus Christ. The Daily Beast. There we go. And it was horrible. And no one, Kara Swisher didn't say shit. No one said anything. It was fucking disgraceful. But then you really saw, because that moment, Elon could have literally just said, stop harassing her. Yeah. But because she was reporting negatively about Tesla, he just, he let he led them to her. Yeah. And he's done it again and again and again. Yeah. Because he's a nasty freak. Awesome. Love that. And also the body panel gaps on the Cybertruck fit really well. So there's that. So it was all worth it because mm -hmm. they built a really high quality product. We now have a car for a car that looks like it's from the PC game Another World. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything on the Patreon there, Zach? Yes. Let's go to that. If you want to ask questions for the show, if you want an ad-free listening experience, if you want to support us directly instead of through a multimedia conglomerate that will just keep it all, patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire Podcast. They only take a little bit. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm reading the, this is a good question. Patreon's good. And our, pat our patrons are good. We have good patrons here. Prashan says, uh, hi, Ed. Do you think monetizing Reddit goes against its original purpose of being an open form of uncensored speech? What do you think about the idea that some digital services should serve as a public resource instead of selling your data for profit? So I do think it does. They've been monetizing since 2009. Mm -hmm. So they've been doing this a while. And they've been, they didn't rot out this company doing that. They rotted it out by growing it to 2,000 people. Because once you have the demands of that many people, you are just trying to just build revenue. Where there never really was. I do think it's kind of antithetical to the design of Reddit. There's never been a good... The ads on there look weird. They feel mm -hmm. very dissonant. And yeah. there's no way to make them not feel dissonant. Sorry, someone's trying to phone me on my goddamn watch. Um, and what's... About the idea that... You know what? I have always thought... I wish they would nationalize these social networks. It would be great. But at the same time, you run into massive, obviously, First Amendment issues yeah. there. I do wish they were actually nonprofits. I think that that would be a nonprofit Reddit would have made sense. But how else would Sam Altman make $400 million? <laughs> how else would Alexis Ohanian make so much money? How else would Steve Huffman make $193 million in 2023? Very frustrating, very anger-inducing. But no, I think that Facebook, Twitter, all them... They should be nonprofits. They're not. They never were founded in that manner. Yeah. They should have been. And even OpenAI, which is meant to be a nonprofit, was never going to be one. Yeah, that was the a joke. The tech economy just, mm, mm, they love they love fucking shit up. Yeah, it always goes too far. And it does. And I think it's it sucks because on some level, these platforms wouldn't have got so big if they were nonprofits. But at the same time, would that have been worse? Yeah. Would it be, would it, is it a better world that there are billions of people on Facebook? I, I mean, I, my, my personal world is better not being on Facebook yeah. and not being on Twitter and but, only being on Instagram a little bit. The original days of Facebook were pretty great. I got on it in college in 05, and it was a great thing for me, like talking to people. That was when they were pre-revenue. Yeah. I think Facebook could have chugged along as a private company for a long time. There's a lot of, I think Mark Zuckerberg's a nasty bitch. I think he's horrifying. But the, if you read some of the stuff around the IPO, you could tell he didn't want to do it. Yeah. He got pushed into it. I'm not saying he's a good guy, but I think a private Facebook would have been dramatically different. They mm. were still worth $50 billion. They were still a huge company, but freaks like Mark Andreessen needed to get rich. Yeah. And it sucks. And Blue Sky, I have a lot of hopes for because it is, I believe, a nonprofit and it's a really well-run company and they've done very good things so far. It's not perfect. No social network is. But that's why I like them. And that's why I'm on there way more than Twitter now. Now every time I go on Twitter, it's like you get eight replies. Seven of them are bots. Two of them are like mm -hmm. pussy in bio, nudes in bio. One of them's a crypto scam. Mm -hmm. And then there's four blue check guys being like, very good, yes. Great stuff, agree. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. just chat GPT generated bollocks. It, it's, 
very sad time. Yeah, I've seen a new trend where the reply will say almost verbatim what the original post said. Yes, and that's... It'll just say, like, that, uh, that was a great point that you said, and then it just inserts the copy of the And if you look at Ian Rappaport and, like, football guy, um, and football people, they get a lot of that. Where, like, oh, when really? they do a free agency signing, it'll be like, wow, Kirk Cousins signed with the Falcons. Wow, this happened. It's, and it's you're right, it's very common, and it's just because... If you see a blue check mark, because they've learned a way to fuck Elon Musk. Yeah, it's actually it's, it's so, like siphoning like it's, blue check revenue off. You've got him, right? you've got to give it to Elon Musk. He was like, "How am I go- how how will I raise money for my company? Uh, I will give people money." <laughs> he just he you go and you look on Twitter now, and you go and look at X payout. That's a very funny search if you want to do it, and you'll find mostly just people in Asia just like arguing about not being paid. And then you'll find some random account with a thousand followers following a thousand people that made like 17 bucks. So and it ro- But that's more than Twitter blue costs. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, it rocks. But yeah, it's, it's very frustrating. And I do think nonprofit social networks would be great. I just don't know if, I don't know. I think kind of like- The people who create social networks will never let that happen. But what sucks is the people that created like Twitter. Let's yeah. F- Biz Stone and all them, to Costello, they were kind of like that. They're idiots. They're all like techno guys who sn- sniff their own farts. Same with Jack Dorsey. But I actually believe if that team had stuck around longer, it might have been better. They're all horrible, by the way. You read all of the books about them. They're all the yeah. same level of freak. But I actually think Twitter was on a good path before Elon. I really do. I think it was chugging along as a boring tech stock. Yeah. And it was they, fine. My my wife worked there for two years. Like it was it was all right. Like yeah. it it actually was like uh, a a pretty good place to work. Yeah. Um. It was like a very inclusive place to work. They had employees like all over the world, um, that did a variety of different things. They weren't just all engineers. It and was they, a fun website to use too, and it provided a lot of information. Right. And it was a way for yeah. international news to get out really mm-hmm. quickly. And yeah, different it was groups. A big part of the Arab Spring. And yep. now it is not that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Racing for Tips says uh, recently subbed to Better Offline from your other podcast appearances. Oh, we, we talked about this for oh, a minute. Yeah. I think before we started, I saw a headline that General Motors is selling user data to insurance companies via connected cars and Lexus Nexus. How much money could car makers be raking in per customer? Are connected cars actually turning buyers into product? This so was com- my fourth complaint for tech that's ruining cars. And oh, I, yeah. I, Go ahead, Ed. So I don't know how much they're making, but absolutely, yes, buyers into product. Yeah. They have absolutely found a way. It is the same thing with tracking cookies. Yeah. But also, by the way, expect a new beautiful form of lawsuit to come out of this. This was actually my biggest concern when I first drove the Polestar 2, which was powered by Android and Google. Right. I was like, ooh, do I want... And I'm, this was not, I'm sure it wasn't the first car to do this. Right, right. It's not the only car to do this. But it was the first time where they were like, now Google's in your car. And I was like, wait a minute. Uh, I, don't want I don't want that at all. But it, it yeah, go on. But yes, they are further productizing the motor vehicle experience and I think that this is because there's a lot of litigation happening around tracking pixels on websites and people are basically you can get $5,000 a piece there's a lot of chop shop law making I wouldn't be surprised if a similar thing happens here but before that happens these car companies are absolutely doing this Tesla has their own insurance product they're fairly upfront with it yeah it's like it's the driving score thing we were talking about it before we came on. Progressive had the OMD thing. The snapshot. And that's but that and each time it's offered with this kind of oh you could get paid. You, sorry, you get cheaper insurance if you drive well. What they don't say is, however. Yeah. And it's racist as well. Just to be clear, it's extremely biased. It's insurance companies judge unsafe neighborhoods, urban markets. Yeah. And it stinks. It sucks. It's so bad. But yes, the turn and this whole um. God, what car company was doing? There's like a subscription product. You need BMW. To, yeah, that, they bailed on that. There was such good. a backlash. They bailed on that. Yeah, Fucking disgraceful. Audi, yeah. Audi announced one this week. Yeah, though. that's did what they? I was. Yeah. It, it, what did they, What did Audi announce? Uh, it's like power steering or something. Yeah, the, like, no, no, that's no way. It was that. Maybe but, not power steering. That, now that I say that, the, the, the BMW one was heated seats. That was the which is insane. That's the thing when it's a feature that's literally in the vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man, you can't yeah. charge it. I already bought the fucking thing. Yeah, but it's it's going to become more common. They want more than this is growth at all cost bullshit. This is. I mean, I think I feel like the what what would be very valuable is like 
where you're driving, like the tra- like the, the, the breadcrumbs of like literally where you're going so that people, so that companies will know like where to put billboards, where to fucking, you know, do this well, and that. how about a 31-year-old in a particular town who works at this company, all the information they already have. Yeah. And they now can match telemetry data to that. Is that the right word? Like yeah. basically – where you go, where you shop, what you do, when mm-hmm. you leave the house, when you don't leave the house, this information will be used to sell more shit to you and make your shit more expensive at the same time. It stinks. It's so yeah. bad. Uh, I don't know, but in Europe, Audi, you can subscribe to the Matrix LED package, the thing that selectively dims the high beams in oh, certain interesting. areas. So that's a subscription. But this was that, that's something they do there, but they're going to have more functions coming out because uh, in Audi's mind... Uh, they see it as a way for customers to get more out of their vehicle over their lifetimes. So you can just not you know, give, add things. Just add not things. about giving them less. Yeah, it's just yeah, weird that the headlights yeah. are like, you want the normal high beams, they're like this. But if you want to make them sparkle, dazzle, yeah. and aim at certain oh, things, you just pay a little money. Scumbags. Yep. Okay. Uh, Ivan says, uh, do you think marketing strategies towards cars have changed? Uh, what's the main focus point when trying to sell an automobile to the, mass, to the masses, and does it change depending on the type or brand? Uh, mm. I think we're kind of exiting the time of selling a car like an app. I think they've realized that you can't just turn a car into a big pile of tech. And I think especially the Cybertruck is going to mm. make people scared of that. But also, look at the, the Rivian. Rivians are, they're technological and they're nice. And I feel like the things they do make sense. And I think they're just going to see, I think they're going to start turning away from all the bullshit. We're kind of in like the late stage Android phase, I think, not literally the operating system, but I don't know if any of you remember, late 2000s, early 2010s, Android was rough as fuck. You had the BlackBerry yeah, Bold, yeah, yeah. you had the the BlackBerry Bold, which had the physical touch screen that sucked so bad. You had like the Droid, which was fine, but the iPhone was always better. Now our Android phones are getting up there. I actually think you're gonna see better autos, but also marketing wise, I don't know. It still feels like every commercial I see feels like the same thing. Well, the new car companies such as Rivian and Lucid and Tesla is not a new car company anymore, but I think they count. They're not doing print advertising. They're not doing TV advertising. Um, and I think the existing brands are going to eventually follow down that sort of path. So is it just not working, you think? I think it's expensive. Yeah, it's I think really automakers expensive. spend the most on advertising in a year of like any huh. industry. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I think it'll probably be. Uh, I mean, there a lot of companies are now. It's 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 ruggedness. It's outdoorsy shit. Whether it's Subaru or Rivian right. or or whatever, um, and I think it's becoming less and less cool. To show like cars like racing around the street, and like stuff. in the desert doing donuts. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wish cars were more fun in commercials. They always feel so serious. Every car. That's why. Well, Toyota made this ad where it was, it was like a behind the scenes look, but you know, not behind the scenes. But basically, it was the creative company is pitching to the lawyers, and they're like, "All right, we think it would be cool if a car was sliding around." And then the Toyota lawyers are like, "Yeah, awesome!" And then it shows that clip, and then they pull back and they go. Ooh, but that might not work. Can we add a helmet and slow it down? And they're uh, like, sure. And then suddenly the car is going two miles per hour. And it was a very funny, you know, kind of That's break fun. that forth. What was in the video went vi- the commercial went viral. It was great. Hey, I just remembered something. So did you see the YouTube video where someone shot their Cybertruck with a gun? Mm-hmm. There are that many of them. Is, yes. No, someone actually like the. Uh, Jerry rig everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He with showed it with a cow. fifty cow, which yeah. is just fucking stupid. But and put a hole in it, right? I mean, yeah. Obviously, you put a hole in most things. Yeah, yeah. But also like, like subsonic rounds just went through it. Just like I, lo- I just love that Elon just like makes shit off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, very, I mean, people yeah. tested like it does. It did stop certain bullets, but yeah, it will but also certain not stop bullets. certain bullets. Well, it stopped like nine millimeter. It stopped like an MP five. Mo- I don't know. But it's not gonna stop like I don't know in Elon Musk's theoretical future with the apocalypse comes where all the MGTOW well, guys the idea sh- that uh, the don't perfect get shot. apocalypse vehicle is a connected electric car yeah. with fucking <laughs> steer by wire you have to be on fucking mescaline <laughs> to think that that's going to work well, but one of the, the perfect apocalypse vehicle is a diesel four cylinder 4x4 four four van with no power steering and a fucking like a 55 Lada. gallon <laughs> my Delica dude yeah, yeah, my Delica good. is the apocalypse vehicle that is 100% it's, it. I went to Maryland for a Thanksgiving when I was in college, and uh, I think I drove around in a perfect apocalypse. It was like this. My ass hurt after like 10 minutes yep. of driving. That's how you know. Yeah. And they're doing donuts in a parking lot. It's just a what bit, was it? 
I, it was just an old Toyota, like a really old Toyota. That sounds right. Mm -hmm. Like there that, was no LEDs to speed yeah, up. They no, just, you could drop a nuke three kilometers from that car and then fucking drive it Yeah, away. the car would be fine. Yeah, the car you would, would you, like, the car will survive the You'll nuke. have no skin left, but the car will be okay. Car will, yeah. If it somehow, had fewer lights than you have fingers, yeah, it's no, reliable. You know? No, no, it really was just like, there was no cushioning in this. The, the, yeah. the seats had material on them oh it was just like the technically just yeah, had material. Yeah, material yeah yeah uh great mate mate uh given ed's recent appearance on behind the back oh you were on behind the bastards yeah that was the steve jobs thing oh was that a fun i mean in a very I mean, depressing robert, way robert evans rocks yeah and he's he's one of my bosses at cool zone and uh yeah steve jobs is the biggest pe he's worse than elon musk scumbag dead beat that piece of shit yeah i, I yeah, he's hell, not steve. he's not great um I'd like to go listen to that one. I didn't know you were on that. I got to check it out. I've, I Some of those Behind the Bastards are no. fucking brutal. Oh, yeah. The Dr. Oz one is nuts. Dr. Oz is a real bag of shit. Uh, what historical figures in the automotive world are worthy of their own Behind the Bastards episodes? Henry Ford. Yeah, I think Henry Does Ford, he they, not, they, they might have done Henry Ford. He is so bad. They it must. That, Henry Ford is like, you do him in the first five episodes. Yeah, that I would not be surprised if they were in Henry done. Ford was a lunatic. I'm trying to think. Of, I don't know other auto entrepreneurs. It's like a... Um, I mean, right? It says they have not done Henry Ford. Really? Yet. Oh yeah. man, that's a lot a of people fucking, say. How could they not have done it? That's a triple it? header. I is Henry Ford? I need to ask Robert about. Um, that. I mean, there's um, you know, Hitler, <laughs> and, and the Hitler? origins of Volkswagen. Oh, you could yes. certainly say. Um, there was um, they've done him. I mean, there's uh, yeah. Uh, there's a uh, uh, Hitler, <laughs> the classic bastard. <laughs> <laughs> the reason the, they made this show, maybe. The um, you know, all of the guys who who really conspired against uh, regulators in the fifties. Um, it was really GM, Ford, and Chrysler right. to to fight safety and emissions regulations. There's there's a lot of them. Who was the CEO of VW during that whole emissions thing? Uh, was it Piek? Who was the fucking Zach? Who was the CEO of Volkswagen during um, Dieselgate? Thought he went to jail. Well, it wasn't. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say the wrong thing, but ChatGPT. Uh, uh, Adolf it, Hitler was the CEO. No, who was? Oh, Martin Winterkorn. Yep, it was Martin Winterkorn. Yeah, I think he got in a lot of trouble. He did. <laughs> he got in an enormous amount um, of trouble. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. God, these guys have some names. Yeah, he was not. Yeah, look at his face. His face makes him look like a fucking oh, yeah. criminal. Yeah, Wintercorn. I forgot about him. Um, I mean, if they haven't done Henry Ford, that's the. I didn't need to actually ask them about that. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. That Henry Ford would be. Uh... What was his newspaper called? The American Jew. <laughs> what? Oh, you didn't know that. Uh, just look up Henry Ford newspaper Jew. It was called like the something Jew. That's not. This great. is our search history is fucked. Uh, what was it called? The Weekly Newspaper. What was it called? Do you uh, do you want to no, it was. Um, different. It's not. <laughs> that is different. Also known as the, the International oh, yeah. Jew. The, the, the International World. Jew. Excuse oh, me. Yes. I think that looks like it was. Yes. The oh, International. Oh, it was on the front page every week. My the, bad. The, so the, the Dearborn. The Dearborn Jew. was the paper, but his headline story every week. Yes. The International yeah. Jew. I'm Jewish, bro. so. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was. It was okay though. I like totally it. Okay. A complex story. No, it wasn't. <laughs> he had a he had a regular column to be anti-Semitic. He did it so often he needed a section. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's good Henry, people Henry on Ford both sides of his yeah. brain. <laughs> it's like the beginning of uh, what, Star Wars. Heroes on both sides. Oh, Very yeah. strange movie. Um, so yeah. Any more? Was that was that all? Of them? Uh, that was all. Of them. Okay, cool. Rad. Well, thanks for coming, Ed. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, where's your Ed at? Uh, well, how do people get your... Now that I'm subscribed, I don't even know where you'd where's fucking find Where's your Ed it. dot at? Where, is that <laughs> Seriously. It? Where's your Ed dot at? Yes. That's how you subscribe to the newsletter. It's... Uh, betteroffline.com as well. I just use that because it has a podcast. You hit the button on it and it has a link to the link tree in the newsletter. Great. Also, great. Place. How did nobody own Better Offline? I don't know. That's crazy. No, I own it. It's mine now. That's awesome. I like your artwork. There. Oh, yeah. That... Who did that? Jeff Nizoga. Oh. I should really know this one off the top of my head. I do If like you reach that out, one. I will tell you who it is. He's based in Ohio, I believe. All right. 
Excellent. Yeah, yeah, Better Offline Podcast. Get it where you get podcasts or fi- right. follow the link tree at betteroffline.com. And uh, the newsletter is awesome. I read every single one. Um, glad you're uh, not where the Nazis are anymore. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah, Henry Ford's preferred uh, yes. newsletter platform, <laughs> as it turns out. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you to our patrons for our questions today. Uh, we are back on it's Thursday, right? We're back Monday. We're back on Monday with Miro, the uh, the test driver for Bugatti Ramats, which is he is the coolest. Bam. And uh, we're going to be talking about fucking two thousand horsepower electric cars. That'll be fun. Sounds fun. Love yeah. to get hit by one one day. <laughs> just, <laughs> it will send you way up in yeah, the exactly. sky. Yeah, exactly. Just turn me into paste. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ed. Thanks so much. Good to see you, bro. Thank you. Talk to you guys later. Bye.